All right, today we're tackling a question that feels like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. You know, the kind of question that makes you stare up at the stars and just wonder, what if? Such a simple question, right? But with absolutely huge implications. It's a really cool thought experiment. And look, for this explainer, we're not actually going to try to answer it. Nope. Instead, we're going to dig into what it even means to ask a question like this. All right, let's get right into it. To really get what this question is all about, we've got to break down the subject itself. So what in the world is the 3 i slash atlas comet? Because it's not just some random name. You know, it's a scientific label, and it's actually packed with clues. So first up, 3i. Now, this little code, it's a really big deal. The I tells us it's interstellar. That means this thing came from outside our solar system. And the 3? Well, it's only the third interstellar object we've ever confirmed. I mean, just let that sink in for a second. This isn't just some local rock floating around. It's basically a messenger, a tiny piece of another star system just passing through, a visitor from that huge, empty space between the stars. Okay, so what about Atlas? Nope, it's not a reference to some ancient myth. It's actually an acronym for the, wait for it, Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. That's a mouthful, right? It's the name of the robotic survey in Hawaii that spotted it. So the name itself connects this visitor from deep space right back to the technology and the people here on Earth who are keeping an eye on the sky. And then there's the last part of the name, Comet. In that one word, it sets our whole baseline expectation. When scientists first saw it, how it looked, how it was moving, they classified it as something we think we know pretty well. So right there in the name, it's framed as something we understand. You know, a natural thing made of ice and dust, doing what we expect it to do. This is the scientific starting point, what you could call the default setting, or the null hypothesis. The idea is, it's a comet, unless the evidence tells us something different. But that's where things get interesting, right? That brings us to the other half of the question, the really provocative part. What would it actually take to prove it's not a comet? So, let's switch gears. We've talked about the science part. Now let's explore that wild hypothesis alien technology. And here's the real challenge. You've got two completely different checklists. For a comet, we expect it to play by the rules, right? It follows gravity. It's made of natural stuff. It's not beaming out radio signals. But for technology, the list of questions is totally different. Is it moving in a way that suggests it's controlled? Is it made of something artificial? Is it sending out information? Does it look like it was built to survive a long journey? That's the kind of stuff you'd have to look for. So this is really the heart of it, isn't it? What would make a person look at something that's officially labeled a comet and even let the thought, what if it's technology, pop into their head? I mean, how do you justify making a leap that big? I mean, really think about it. Going from, huh, that's a funny-looking snowball, all the way to, hey, maybe that's a spaceship. That's a massive jump. But that journey, that leap of logic, it's not always just a wild guess. It actually follows a pattern, a really fundamental one, for how we explore the unknown. And this is a perfect map of that process. See, asking the big question, that isn't the final answer. It's step three. It's the hypothesis. It all starts when you see something weird that makes you ask questions. And if what you're seeing doesn't line up with what you thought you knew, you have to come up with a new idea, even if it sounds a little crazy. And then comes the most important part of all. You've got to go look for the evidence. That whole cycle? That's the engine that drives all of science and discovery. And that really brings us to the big takeaway here. Because this explainer, it isn't really about proving or disproving if Comet Atlas was an alien ship. It's about why asking the question, in and of itself, is so incredibly important. Think about it. Asking what if is how we make progress. It's what makes us say, hey, we need to build a better telescope. These questions push our imagination way beyond what we see every day. And maybe most importantly, they make us really draw a line in the sand between what we know is true versus what we just assume is true. Above all else, questions like this keep that sense of wonder, that magic about the universe, totally alive. So in the end, that's really the key. It doesn't matter if the answer turns out to be a simple, nope, just a comment, or something way more mind-blowing. The act of asking is what changes us. It broadens our horizons and gets us ready for whatever's out there waiting to be discovered. So, you know, this challenge isn't just for scientists staring through telescopes. It's really for every single one of us. Pushing boundaries in any field always starts with curiosity. 
it starts with having the guts to ask a big, weird, maybe even impossible question. 